ready for a deep dive. We're talking fungal infections today. You've been researching this, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's way more interesting than it sounds. I bet. So we're digging into the NAC protocol, some studies you found, even like historical stuff. Absolutely. Should be fun. Okay, so like everyone knows about bacteria, viruses, the usual fungi, not so much. But they're everywhere, right? Yeah, they're everywhere. I was reading research like from the 1940s even, and they found aspergillus spores in every single house. Like everyone they tested. Kind of wild. It's true. They get around those spores, especially in the air. Makes you think twice about breathing, huh? We think mushrooms harmless, but some fungi, maybe not so much. Right. We're finding even though harmless ones, they might have long-term effects. We're talking inflammation, maybe even messing with our DNA. Okay, that's not good. That's way worse than like athlete's foot or something. Seriously, how bad are we talking? Well, mycotoxins are the big thing. Mm -hmm. That's the nasty stuff some fungi produce. Their defense mechanism, basically. So it's like the fungi are fighting back. In a way, yeah. And those mycotoxins, they cause inflammation, mess with our cells. You said DNA damage before. That's serious stuff, right? It can be. Yeah. Aflatoxin, for example. That one's produced by Aspergillus flavus. Huge problem in food. Big reason for recalls, actually. No kidding. So we're breathing this stuff, eating it. Sounds unavoidable. It's about minimizing risk, right? Yeah. Which is where the NAC protocol comes in. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get into. That's using natural stuff to fight back, right? Yeah. Boosting the immune system, all that. Exactly. And what's really interesting is the idea came from a guy's personal experience. You familiar with John Madrowski? Oh, yeah, I saw that YouTube video, right, where he talks about this Perbson guy who had all these health problems. Then, boom, fungal connection. That's the one. Perbson had, like, chronic pain, digestive issues, the works. He takes antifungals for thrush, and suddenly mm. other symptoms clear up. It's crazy how that happens, you know? Like, this thing's been lurking in the background, causing chaos. He ends up diving deep into this whole fungi and chronic illness connection, which leads to the NAC protocol. Wow. So what is the NAC protocol exactly? How does it work? So this Perimson story, it really makes you wonder about the NAC protocol, like what clicked for him? Well, it boils down to three main things. NAC, that's N-acetylcysteine, oregano oil, and black seed oil. Each one tackles fungal infections differently. Okay, so NAC, that's a mouthful. What's the deal with that one? It's a powerful antioxidant, but the key is it helps your body make glutathione. And glutathione, that's like the master detoxifier, right? Yeah. Gets rid of those mycotoxins. So like boosting our defenses from the inside out. Exactly. Giving your body what it needs to fight back. Then there's oregano oil. Sounds weird, I know. Because pizza toppings, right? Right. But it's seriously potent against fungi. Has these compounds, carvacol and thymol. They mess with the fungi's cell walls. Oh, wait. Okay, that's pretty cool. And black seed oil, what's its superpower? Black seed oil has been used forever. Traditional medicine and all. Yeah. Reduces inflammation helps the immune system. Plus, it's got thymocanone. Thymo. What now? That's a new one. Basically, it protects your liver. And the liver, remember, it's filtering out all that toxic stuff, the mycotoxins included. Ah, so it's like backup for the liver while it's dealing with all that. Precisely. It lets the liver keep doing its job, even under pressure. This is starting to sound like a whole strategy, not just like random ingredients. Right. And the cool thing is, there's actual science backing up each part. It's not just... Oh, this seems to work. That's good to hear, because some of this stuff sounds almost too good to be true. So if someone's thinking, I want to try this, what then? Like, is there a dosage, a right way to do it? The document you shared, it actually has all those details, dosage and all, but huge but. Talk to your doctor first, always, before starting anything new. Right, of course. No self-medicating, no matter how promising it sounds. Okay, so beyond the protocol itself, is there anything else people can do to, like, minimize exposure to these fungal toxins in the first place. Absolutely. Remember how those spores are everywhere, especially at home? Ventilation is key. So opening a window now and then actually helps. Huge help. Fresh airflow gets those spores out of there. Air purifier with a HEPA filter, that's even better. Makes sense. What about food, since we talked about that earlier, aflatoxin, all that? You're thinking of the Good Food NEC Protocol Recipes document, right? Yeah, that's the one. Lots of recipes, low in yeast, processed foods. Good stuff. Exactly. Shows you don't have to eat cardboard to be healthy. Love that. Okay, so this all makes sense. But you mentioned side effects earlier. Even natural stuff can have those, yeah. right? What about the NEC protocol? Anything to watch out for? Good point. Usually it's fine, but some people, they get fatigue, maybe some digestive stuff, headaches. Mm -hmm. Mostly when they're just starting out. So listen to your body, basically. Don't push through if it feels wrong. Exactly. 
And the good news is, usually it's temporary. Once your body gets used to it, it goes away. That's reassuring. Speaking of the body adjusting, something else that caught my eye. Die-off symptoms. That sounds kinda ominous. Their Herzheimer reaction, yeah. Sounds scarier than it is. So, not a bad thing, necessarily. Think of it like this. You're fighting the fun guy. Right. And as they die off, they release a bunch of toxins all at once. Their last stand. Basically. And that can temporarily make your symptoms worse. Fatigue, brain fog, that sort of thing. So feeling worse actually means it's working. Wild. Exactly. Usually passes within a few days, maybe a week. Just got to power through. This has been so eye-opening, seriously. And we're just scratching the surface of this whole fungal world, aren't we? Oh, absolutely. What we're learning now is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to discover about fungi and how they affect us. I can't wait to see what else we learn. Okay, so before we move on from this fascinating but slightly terrifying topic, any final thoughts for our listeners today? Just because fungi can be a problem doesn't mean we need to be afraid of them. It's about understanding them, knowing the risks, and taking steps to protect ourselves. Like you said, knowledge is power. And sometimes, a little bit of oregano oil. Who knew? Exactly. We were heading into some seriously interesting territory, like ancient myths, legends, all that. Could there really be a connection to fungi? Right. It's like, did our ancestors know more than we thought? Exactly. Like we were just about to get to some specific examples. We were talking about Seth, the Egyptian god. Chaos, disease, all that. Oh, yeah, right. I was thinking even bad breath got its own god back then. But now, maybe there's more to it. Yeah, it's all connected, right? So some researchers think the Seth story, it's actually a metaphor. Mm -hmm. About too much bread, too much beer. Wait, bread and beer? What do those have to do with fungi? Yeast, my friend. Yeast is a fungus. Fermentation, the whole deal. Maybe the Egyptians were onto something with all that bread and beer talk. Like a warning hidden in plain sight. Wow. Okay, that just blows my mind. Makes you wonder what else we've missed. Looking at history through the wrong lens. It's a whole new perspective, right? Our understanding of fungi, it's changing so fast. But maybe our ancestors... They understood it on a different level. It's like we're catching up to something they already knew, in a way. This is why I love these deep dives, honestly. Always something new to make you think. Absolutely. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. As we wrap up, what are the big takeaways you want listeners to remember? Well, first off, fungi are everywhere. Not just mushrooms, but this whole hidden world affecting our environment, our health. Way more important than we realize. Right. And the more we learn, the more we realize... Some fungi can cause problems, infections, health issues, even chronic stuff, maybe more than we thought. The research on that is still new, but it's definitely something to watch for sure. Exactly. And that's where the NSE protocol comes in as one potential approach. But again, got to say it, talk to a doctor first. Always, always, always. No self-treating, no matter what. Couldn't agree more. But even without the protocol, simple things help. Ventilation at home. Being smart about what we eat, it all adds up. Exactly. Knowledge is power, as they say. And a little awareness goes a long way. This whole deep dive, it's really been eye-opening. Why to hear it? The world fungi is pretty wild when you get into it. Tell me about it. Okay, so that's a wrap on fungal infections, at least for now. We'll definitely have to revisit this topic. There's so much more to learn. But until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and we'll see you on the next deep dive.